Welcome. Welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock, a special holiday edition of Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I hope you're enjoying the holidays. We're trying to continue to push out some content to help you enjoy your holidays. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the movie uh, Leave the World Behind. We're going to do it with Shamika Michelle. Uh, you guys know her as a regular on this show and new friend to the program, Siaka Masakwa. He's going to join us. He's an actor out in Los Angeles. He's been charged for his activities, his harmless activities on January 6th. You've seen him on the show before. Uh, I watched uh, <laughs> the movie Leave the World Behind and felt like uh, I got ripped off and tricked into watching the movie Leave the World Behind. I don't even know if I can do justice to explaining this movie. It, it, it's some kind of cyber attack that causes all these apoplectic catastrophes or chaos. Uh, and it's, it's starring, I believe, Julia Roberts, Ethan Hawke. Uh, I can't say Marshala Ali's name. Marshala Ali, whatever. Who cares what his name is? You guys know him. You, you see, you'll see black dude, uh, pretty accomplished actor, and uh, it, there's a little, uh, Ali's got a little daughter, Ruth, and, and anyway, Julia Roberts' character and her husband, I think her name is Amanda, the husband's name is Clay, they rent some really nice luxury house out in the middle of nowhere uh, to get away from the city. And then Ali's character, I believe Ali's name is G.H. or George, and his daughter Ruth, they show up at the house. It's their house, their Airbnb in it. But they show up with a story like, hey, man, it's power outage. We can't go back to our apartment in the city. We want to stay here. And there's this uncomfortable tension because Julia Roberts, Ethan, they're one family's white, one family's black. The black family owns this, you know, seem, looks like four or five million dollar home out in the middle of nowhere. And <clears throat> they never really explain what happened, how this cyber attack basically short circuited America. But, but we were under attack, and who knows if it was by China, if it was by the North Koreans, if it was by. I don't know. Fidel, Fidel Castro's dead, so it couldn't be him. I don't know who attacked America. The movie doesn't try to explain. At the end of the day, it was just a bad movie that leaned into a bunch of racial stereotypes and, and a lot of clickbait. It was just a really, really, really bad movie that was dependent upon you being triggered by the clip they showed of the little black girl, the 20-something-year-old black girl, telling her dad that she doesn't trust white people. And that went all over social media. And the Obamas, they had something to do with this movie. And there was something racist said. And everybody went and watched the movie. And by the time I was done with the movie, I was like, what the little girl said wasn't that big of a deal. That's in most movies now. That kind of you know, racial stupidity. It just wasn't that important. And it seemed like it was a gimmick to bait us into watching a movie that made no sense. There seemed to be a bunch of angry deer running around uh, that at one point surrounded Julia Roberts' character and, and, and the little black girl, and none of it made sense. Anyway, Shamika, uh, help me make sense of this movie. Maybe it was better uh, than I'm giving it credit for, but whew, I thought it was bad. Your thoughts? <laughs> Jason, I am grieving, but it was only watching this movie that I said, God, why has thou forsaken me? Why is Jason so angry with me? Like, I, I just did a good video for him. Why would he do this to me at this time? It was so bad. It was worse than watching paint dry. I would rather hear nails scrape down a chalk chalkboard. I would rather hear someone's teeth scrape against a fork. It was really 
really bad, Jason. I, I haven't seen a movie that bad since maybe it was this movie called Tyreek or Tyrell or something that Netflix had out a few years ago. But this was bad. Bad. It was- <laughs> I don't know if Netflix, I mean, early on, Netflix actually did good TV series. I used to watch, I think Bloodline was on Netflix, and there's been several things. Maybe House of Cards was on Netflix. But, but now, virtually everything Netflix puts out is horrendous. And so I went in with low expectations, but, but I thought the movie would have some point of view that would irritate me or trigger me or provoke something in me. This didn't provoke anything in me other than indifference and just like pity for whoever put this together and thought this was good. Uh, I I will say this though, I did not like Julia Roberts' character and I did not like the little black girl. I didn't like either one of those characters. And then I didn't respect either the men. The, The white dude was about as beta as you can mm. be, he, I mean, he was soft as charm and tissue. And, and help me pronounce, but you probably know the name Marcella Ali or can pronounce it better than I can. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> I don't, but I'm sorry. He's a pretty good actor. I've, he's a pretty good actor that's, that's popular or whatever, but I didn't like anybody in the movie. That was the, I didn't connect with anybody. I didn't relate to anybody. There was no hero in the movie. There was, there was nothing. The movie was so bad, Jason. It felt like a waste of two hours and 21 minutes. Like it, so it was so much going on in the movie. Yes, her husband was a beta. Not only was he a beta male, he had the name of some feminist band on his shirt that actually then pushed the narrative that, yes, I'm a beta male and I bow down to women. Look how great these women are on the front of my shirt. Look how great my wife is. You know, it was uh, uh, it was just so bad, Jason. And let's let's get to the point of her music choices that just were unbelievable (laughs) when they stood and danced and you saw her going. Offbeat, baby, when you're grinding, I get so excited. I was, it was like, no, you don't even look like the type of woman that would like that type of music. You can't keep the beat to it. And then I'm supposed to believe that you all ended in this embrace. This man who had no idea where his wife was, if she was dead or alive, is now, you know, y'all are thinking, I'm married. You're married too. And I'm like, I know this little rhythmless nation don't have you a thinking <laughs> about to cheat on your wife. It was so bad. And then nothing made sense. Like when, sorry for the people who haven't watched it, because these are true spoilers. When the little boy's teeth were falling out and they said, well, maybe it's the sound. Well, why hasn't this sound caused anybody else's teeth to fall out? Like nothing was consistent in this movie. They were just all over the place. And um, the little girl who kept having these, you know, spiritual inclinations or whatever, something's wrong or, oh, Jason. You're talking about the little white girl. The little white girl, yes. And the black girl was just annoying. She just had a smart remark for everything. She was just real snippy. I didn't like her. There wasn't, as you said, there wasn't one character that I really liked. If I had to choose one, it would probably be the man standing on his front porch with his shotgun saying, you're not get, like I would have to choose him as the best person in the movie. He was the only one that seemed somewhat genuine because even though he knew this guy, he was a neighbor, he knew something wrong was going on. So he was being very protective, whereas everybody else saw something was going on. And it was like, yeah, I'm going to open my doors and, you know, take in this strange man who doesn't even have an ID to say this is his house. It just wasn't believable. And then they slept. 
You let a strange man come stay downstairs and then you slept well. Nothing made sense in this movie. It it should have been on let Tubi. Me call you, <laughs> let me call you one better. Not only did they let this strange man in their house, the, what, what I thought they were going to show in the next scene was that they went and grabbed their two kids and made them sleep in the same bed with them. <laughs> and when I didn't see that, I was like, really? There's yeah. some men y'all don't know with no ID down in the, and I don't care, black, white, green, whatever. There's another right. man inside this house. I got a 13-year-old daughter. I got a 15-year-old son. He might like both of them. Y'all come yeah. sleep with me and your daddy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, just, it, that was crazy. That just speaks to how poorly written the whole thing was. But, but the, the music choices, Shamika, were you at the very beginning when they had the little opening scene, mm -hmm. and then they cut to a rap song, a, 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 a gangster rap song? I was like, no, hold on, you done showed me Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke, two white folks in their 50s. And now we cut into the Minister Society soundtrack? It made no sense to me. So none of the music choice. When she was driving around shopping and listening to that old school R&B, I was like, who, who is this white woman? Who, who right. is 50 something? You know, she, <laughs> she ain't listening to George Strait. She ain't listening okay. to uh, <laughs> Bon Jovi. I mean, who, <laughs> she ain't listening to Led Zeppelin. I mean, I, it just made no Anybody, sense. Anybody, Shania <laughs> Twain, give me something else <laughs> besides that because because I had to watch the movie, my best friend was like, well, okay, I'm going to watch it too so we can, you know, talk about it afterwards. She loved the soundtrack. So she was like, I wonder if I can get the soundtrack to the movie. They had such a good variety, you know, old school and, you know, and I said, but it just wasn't believable. Like I used to hang around a white girl who who was always around black people who I know enjoys black music, but she did she doesn't give you hippie when you see her. She doesn't give you super feminist like the Julia Roberts character. Like she doesn't give you that. It's more believable when I see her, you know, bobbing her head to stuff that I know she's been listening two years this was just so unbelievable like I felt like if Julia Roberts was as immersed in black music as the movie tried to portray we should have seen a little rub off of the culture on her and there was no rub off nothing at all not even rhythm like how can you be so immersed in black culture but not have any rhythm it just was not believable at all. So I don't, I'm thinking I can write something. Let me put something of mine up on Netflix if it's that easy, because I just don't even see how this movie came to the light of day. It's poorly written. To me, it was poorly uh, casted and it was just bad. And these are two good actors. Julia Roberts is a great actor. And so is Ethan Hawke and the black guy. These are people that I've seen in other movies that I thought just did a phenomenal job. Pretty Woman is one of my top favorite movies. This, however, trash. I had a, I had a friend that watched it who's deep off in the political world. And his argument was, that Mahershala Ali, Mahershala Ali, or whatever his name is, that he was basically the stand-in for Barack Obama. His whole worldview and his thoughts were Barack Obama. My contention is that Julia Roberts is the stand-in for Michelle Obama. And, 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 and literally, because the, the point you're making about White women that like R&B music, they can dance. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm just saying, if, if you like, there's a reason why they like R&B music, because they want to dance. And, mm -hmm. and so this, this little feminist, elitist, off-put, to me, I was like, oh, this is just white Michelle Obama. Uh, <laughs> and, and so... I, I go back and forth on whether the Obamas were really involved in this movie. 
and whether I should blame them for this. But, but, but it does seem like a white director or Netflix or studio, executive producer, this is what happened. You go consult the Obamas to, hey, how would black people operate in this environment? And this is what you come up with, their interpretation. And, and it, 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 does, it, it rings inauthentic. I think because Obama and both Obamas, Michelle and Barack, are pretty inauthentic people. Uh, you know, Barack's pretending that, you know, he was raised in the hood and that, you know, he's a homeboy from around the way. And Michelle pretending like she likes black people and she really doesn't. Right. I was just having a conversation about the Obamas last night, actually. And they were saying there's no way that Michelle is like your traditional black woman because she would have put her foot down when Obama was passing all that gay stuff and said, hey, listen, you're not getting ready to be known as this type of president. Like, why didn't she come and save that brother? Because his legacy is not what I think, you know, a traditional black man will want their legacy to be like, yes, you were the first black president, but we all look at you as the gay president. Nobody really wants to be known as that. And so Michelle is not as down as she wants to make those, you know, make it seem you can put a thousand braids in your hair. We're not going to believe you're this down, uh, a, B, you know, we're just not going to believe that because of how you allowed your husband to push policies that were pro-gay. And so many people thought they were going to get in office and be very pro-black and they were not. One of the things that's bothering me about this movie is how I'm seeing people say, hey, you know, you all, this is a deeper meaning. You need to pay attention First of all, if it took this pitiful movie to make you pay attention, you you are still sleeping because most of us, we understand predictive programming. It didn't take this movie to open our eyes to make us think, oh, it could be a cyber attack. They could take down the power grids. We already know this. Those of us that have been hollering about the uh, uh, China and the power they have and why do we keep selling them land here? And we know this already. People pushing this movie, trying to say we need to watch it because it's so deep and it's telling us a BS. You are still sleeping. And if you didn't know this before this movie, I don't even know what to say to you because, yes, I believe in predictive programming. Yes, there's another movie coming out called Civil War that I think they're showing us this is what's going to happen. Be prepared. Start to stock up on your water, which you should already be doing. Your canned goods, getting armed, you know. We should already be doing that. This movie was not the message, though, to push that. Thank you, Shamika. Hope you're enjoying your holidays. Hope you got my Thank Christmas you. gift. We'll see you next time. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, and get a professional opinion on this from Siaka Masakwa. He's a, an actor out in Los Angeles, new friend to the show. Siaka, next. Caden Robertson, previously on Fearless. There's a sign on the door that says what? Um, like, do not step on this. He's got like a red carpet outside of his door. And like, don't step on this mat unless your shoes are off and don't come in unless invited or something like that. He has a, a, a doormat in front of his floor that says, did I say you could come in? <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> is, is, it's a doormat. I just want to be clear. 
Caden's calling it a red carpet. It was red. I, I think it was a little different in the spring than the current setup is. Uh, currently, he has a doormat in front of his office that says, did I say you could come in? For the question mark. All right, uh, we've heard from Shamika about Leave the World Behind. Now let's get a professional opinion from an actor and new friend to the show. Uh, you guys remember Siaka Masakwa. Uh, he's under attack by the FBI for spending 70 seconds inside the Capitol on January the 6th, but he's also an accomplished actor. He was in one of my favorite new movies, or maybe even my favorite movie of 2023, Lady Ballers, uh, Siaka, welcome back, and thank you for uh, helping me get to the bottom of this movie because I really, really need a professional opinion. I watched it. Yeah. I'm confused. I thought it was yes. a hot mess. Uh, yes. And so give me a professional opinion. What was that? Uh okay, there's two things. One, it was just another subpar Netflix movie. And two, we as conservatives got got. They literally told us how we got got in the movie. If you remember uh, Marcia, Ma, Ma, well, I forget his name, Ali, when he talks about after the Kevin Bacon scene and they're in the car and they talk about the three steps. First is isolation. Second is disinformation to get people riled up. Now, let's look back at how people even talked about this movie. There's a bunch of conservative names that were putting up, look at Obama's new movie. And this one scene, right, that she says, when she said, uh, um, you know, there's a part about let's not trust white people. If that one scene, and you watch the movie, that didn't come till about an hour and a half into the movie of a two hour and 25 minute movie. I wish I could get that time back, but I can't. That didn't come till then. And then all they said, it was like racism and Obama. We know conservatives right now, we and Republicans, we're not big fans of Obama. So they basically use the same thing and tactic that's been used against people who are left driven, if you will, about Trump and racism. They did the same thing over here. And now you had you gave we gave them free publicity, we gave them free marketing. And now in order just to watch this to talk about it, you and I said and I watched it last night with my my mother-in-law and my wife and my best friend. My best friend took the kid, his kids in the room about halfway and he was done. The whole time we're watching it, I'm sitting there going, this is just stupid. And they trapped us in the idea that, look, Obama did something racist. They got us, everyone. Conservatives, Republicans, they got us working the same thing that we laugh at the left for getting got for everything they tell that they say Trump saying to them. That's that's the trap they did. For a movie standpoint, it was a bad mid-level M. Light Shyamalan ripoff. They, it's, it was like, you know, you had it was a college student trying to do their amazing version of their thesis film with a bunch of Dutch angles and moving the camera so much that after the first 20 minutes of it being cool, I thought we were going to throw up because it was so dizzy. You had the women all are the exact same of these snotty, bratty, hating everything around them type of individuals, but yet we're supposed to like them. You have these beta males stumbling all over themselves just to be direct. And I remember thinking the first half hour, I don't care what happens to these people. It, it sucks that something happened, but in storytelling, we're supposed to care about these characters. And even a little girl outside of her, who maybe I was like, ah, oh, it sucks that she doesn't get what's going on. Like, I didn't care about anyone. The siblings didn't have a relationship with each other. The mother didn't have a relationship with the husband or the, the or their kids until after one kid took a, disappeared. Also, now she's a mother and cares. Uh, Ali's character was so, he knew what was going on the whole time. They didn't talk about the boat coming off on the beach for an hour and a half later. And I'm like, what is going on? If, <laughs> this was, it, it was contrived. Everyone was lying to each other, but it was written that way. So it can, it can create false, false tension and move the story forward when all they had to do was talk about what was happening. And from a movie and a, and a storytelling standpoint that they could add it, we would be like, okay, what's going on? But everyone was so weak in character. I didn't care about any of them. And that's what it was. And, and, and Jason, you know this. One thing that got me, and this is why I can, you can tell that the, the writing was so subpar. When, they, when the, the characters wanted to make a point, they dropped an F-bomb that didn't fit. Everyone cursed the exact same way. Everyone 
everyone talked the same way. Man, da, 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 da. what the? Oh my God, da, da, da. what the? Oh my God, da, da, da. what the? And you're like, write characters, write personalities. They just wrote, everyone responds like this. And when we want to turn up the heat and we'll, we'll just drop an F-bomb here. It didn't have to. Surprisingly, some of the scenes were well written, but the story and the character work that, that was developed was almost non-existent. And unfortunately, they got eyes that I would never have watched this unless we're coming on here and I want to know what I was talking about. I looked at the previews and was like, eh, I'm good. And most people would have done that for this crap movie. Let me back up just a little bit before I stop this rant. Obama and Michelle, they got fired from that Netflix deal last year because the stuff they were producing, they knew was going to suck, right? Like when they do that, it doesn't stop production and investment in movies. This movie was already bought and paid for. So it had to come out. Knowing it was going to be another subpar movie, what's a great marketing way to get people to watch it? I don't know. You got one side that hates this guy and thinks he's like the worst thing since sliced, you know, since Satan came down from America. Let's say he has something to do with it. Let's take one little clip of the scene, put that out there. And now you have eyes that wouldn't have watched it from the beginning. So we got got and it was just a bad low tier movie anyway. And man, do I agree <laughs> with your take. And, and I said some of this earlier with with Shamika, but it was a gimmick. The Obama thing is a gimmick. And, and, and I, yep. when the movie was over, I was like, I wonder if they really had anything to do with this movie or did they just <laughs> throw this out there be, because they knew it would spark controversy. And, yes. and by the time they got to the clip of the little girl or the 20 something girl, Ali's daughter or whatever, I think her name's Ruth. Yeah, Ruth. By the time she's laying in bed and says she doesn't trust white people, I'm like, this isn't even really that controversial. It's not really <laughs> offensive. It's nothing. If that's it's nothing. That's like standard in movies of the last five to ten years. They throw that kind of stuff in. And and it, it just wasn't even controversial. And so I don't even know how, and, and, and to my credit, I, I, I never, when I saw it over Twitter and everybody was complaining a week ago or 10 days ago, yeah. I never reacted to it because I was like, eh. and I said, well, I got to see the whole movie and see how they unpack this. Does it even make sense? But, but yeah. by the time I got into the movie, I was like, this movie's horrible and they needed something to something. hook us. They needed something to make us want to watch it, talk about it. And so they gave us this little tidbit. And yeah, and we got mm -hmm. got. Uh, it's just a bad... I, I, I'm at a loss. <laughs> I, I don't know what the point is. Uh, I don't know what the... I don't even... I don't know what point they were trying to make in the movie. It was all confusing. And the, I, I got... Siaka, I can't believe you said the thing about the cursing. I didn't have it framed up the way that you did, but I, when I watched the movie, I was like, this cursing seems out of place. Everybody's yeah. dropping F-bombs? I go, everybody? This is how everybody talks? It, it just seems... It's forced. I, I'll tell you, this is... A, I'll give you another thing that I, I thought right from the beginning. Hmm. I think they opened the movie, and this is my memory, I'm old, I'm fuzzy, with Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawks, and it's just a little short two, three-minute scene. And then they come in with this rap music to run oh, the God. credits or whatever, and I was just like, hold on, you just showed me Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke, two 50-something white people, and now it, rap music is yeah. starting and, and this not, deal off. I was like, oh. And it was, and it was, it was, it was pretty kind of hard too. Like it was the, some of the yes. lyrics I was listening to it. Yeah. And we, I literally, it started playing. I get up cause we had it set up. Uh, I had it set up through my computer. I get up and I go and I have to fast forward that part. Cause I was like, this is just stupid. It's out of place. It doesn't fit in here. And it's, to me, it was that is it's a, it, it was a student film that was painted, painted by numbers. You know, it's that same Hollywood tactic where it's done by committee with producers. But this one is like a guy got his chance to show them who he was and, and he was going to be as creative, but be down for the cause at the same time. 
and you're watching this thing happen and she starts out, I hate everybody. So I'm like, oh, great. I can't wait till she goes like uh, I'm not worried about anything. that, And he's stumbling around like, uh, 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 you know, and then they come out with the song that kicks off. And I'm just like, like, are we is this four brothers again, too? Like, what's going on? Like, it just it, it just it, it was trying to do a bunch of stuff, but it was just bad. And unfortunately, I'm going to give you another. You got the eyes. Yeah. I'm going to give you another musical choice that just, I mean, just threw me off. I was like, because huh. at the beginning, I'm like, oh, so they're in, this is going to be Minister Society 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then they show Julia Roberts early in the movie driving around shopping or whatever. And she's listening to some old school R&B. And oh, I was just yeah. like, oh, man. how, how and, does this fit her? This is what she would be listening to. It just, I was like, is this, is this Cooley High? One of my favorite movies of all. I, I didn't, I, make up I your gotta, mind or even, make it make I sense. Even, let's add on that one too. That when they went to the Save the Last Dance moment, when they they turned on uh, Next, later when they were dancing together. And I'm just like, oh no, here we go. Is it going to be the dream? The suburban white woman gets to dance with the brothers of her dream. And, and all of a sudden that little moment was enough for Masha, Masha Ali. I keep forgetting his name, but. To go out there and point a gun at a neighbor that he knew from longer than he knew these people to get their her kids help now all of a sudden. I'm like, it, what? If and he's the one that knows what's going on. It, 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 it was it was it was so bad. It was so it was a bad movie. Let's put it into the bad movie and conservatives, Republicans, please remember, we got got, it's okay. Let's not let it happen again. If they want to make that bad product, let them make it and no one will watch it over again. Let's just not worry about their stuff. It's just terrible anyway. Who was more unlikable? <laughs> Julia Roberts' character, Amanda, or the little black girl, Ruth? Who, who was more unlikable? That was a pretty heated contest, I thought. You know, I, I would go... Um, Oh, man, I, I got to say it was a strong tie. Here's the only reason why. Because they don't write women differently. They all write women at the same type of snotty, nasty personalities that have no feminism and no no feminist feeling inside. And not feminist, femininity, I'm Feminine. sorry. And no warmth in their life. And you saw it's just that's just a different stage. One was just with kids and one was without. But they were exactly the same type of snotty, nasty. I don't. Who are you? Who are you? I don't trust you. I don't trust you. Get out of my face! And one was just the progressive college kid, and one was the progressive mom. That, that's all it was, really. It just so one could speak from a different space, but they were still saying the same things based on the mentality of being terrible people. They were terrible women with no type of warmth. And if you notice a lot of the a lot of the writing in Hollywood. That's how all women are written, unfortunately. So now we're missing that feminine quality, that warmth that exists to have these snotty women and all these guys that have no backbone go, oh, I'll still go out with you. I still love you. Da, 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 da. And that's it's done on purpose. And part of it is because they don't even understand how to be masculine anymore. They don't understand what femininity looks like. They don't understand what that is. So they go, well, my boss, who's a producer, oh, well, you know, my that girl, those four girls I dated in the last six years who were boss bees, they, they, they're that, that's who that's who they write for. They don't write women who are actually trying to be mothers, who want to be married. They don't understand that. So we see that. And so this is just another example, like you said, of what has been written anyway. So I'm going to give them a, a tie for the gold. I'm, I'm going to the other movie that that crossed my mind that influenced this guy heavily. I, I don't know who this director is or who this producer, I, the, the, whatever the guy's name starts with an E. I don't know who, yeah. but, but I thought he was trying to have this, it, the movie Get Out influenced him yes. in, in yes. some way. That, yeah. that, that was the other thing I, that, and, and and get out. I have to give it credit. It's not my cup of tea, but I thought it was a well done movie. Yeah, it was. And I yeah, think that AC. guy was trying to go for the the same type of impact or tone or feeling as Get Out, but he just missed badly. 
He missed hard. And it, I felt like it was a bootleg, slow-paced, get-out slash M. Night Set Shyamalan type of movie. There was a twist that didn't twist. There was, um, you know, the pacing that didn't pace out. Like, I've said this to my my girl. We're watching. She's getting all nervous. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, I don't, I don't care. There was not one jump scare in that entire movie. And if you're trying to set it up with the music and the violin, <laughs> you know, and then the, here comes the scene and he's, he's pressured. And I was like, there's, there wasn't a jump scare. This, how about the scene of the woman who's on the road, who's speaking Spanish and the guy now all of a sudden he feels bad. She comes to the window hysterically crying. He's in the middle of nowhere. He doesn't know what's going on. And he's like, I'm going to take off. And then he feels bad about it later. I go, dude, you have kids. First of all, you shouldn't have left the house with a guy you don't know in the first place with your kids and wife in there. That's a whole nother story. But yet you're going to pick some random person up who's hysterical off the street. Like I would have left too and be like, that's just the way it needed to go. Cause I don't know what's going on. I just saw a tanker come onto the beach less than 24 hours ago. It's like these characters weren't even responding properly. This woman who's standing there forever, like, you got to calm down. We live in a society where a crazy person be on bath salts. You let them in your car, you you get your face eaten off. So (laughs) let's her snotting all over the place. Wasn't this thing I should now be like, uh, I got two kids and a wife back at this house. I'm not letting you in this car. I don't know what's going on. I just like planes are, I don't know. So it's like you watch these people not react like people so that it can go forward and everyone feel bad about it. Everyone, they give us that little scene of, Will they, won't they hook up while they're sitting there and the young 20 and something is so brash. She goes, do you want to F me? And you're like, what? You're, can we just have a moment of just trying to connect, honestly? The other two getting hammered and stuff. He tells her the truth. She's like, I don't like you anymore. Let's go dance to a, a song that literally starts out going, I wonder if she can tell I'm hard right now. That's how the song starts out in the movie, just to, <laughs> just to get you to feel something. And you're like, and I, it, it, was, it was an old version of Julia Stiles. And uh, oh boy, in Save the Last Dance, getting in that first scene when he's like, back and forth, back and forth. And then they start dancing. I'm like, they just picked all the tropes. He must have been, I, I would say this because he he was a writer for and the creator of Mr. Robot, which I did like the writing there. The movie felt like it was rushed in the script writing process. And then stuff was dropped in to make people who helped produce it feel happy because they got to see a moment where it's saying, don't trust white people, possibly. They got to see a moment where we play that one song that they love from back in the day. They got to, a lot of times there were scenes where uh, they're, uh, you know, Julia Roberts and Ali are chatting and it's going on for a while. It's, it was unnecessary. Ethan Hawke, Ethan Hawke being the husband is gone for most of this time, leaving his wife and kid in the house with some man they don't know. I'm like, where's the man part of it? I'll be back. I'm going to go to the store. <laughs> I'll see you later. It, they, it, it was it was just it was up and down bad, Jason. And I, you owe me two hours back because I wouldn't have watched this if I wasn't coming on the show to talk about it because I don't want to sound like an idiot. And I will be sending the invoice in the mail because <laughs> this is bad. Everyone, no one watch it. We watched it for you. Save yourself two hours and go outside with your family instead, or something. You know, re- read the book for two, a book for two hours instead. Bianca, <clears throat> thank you so much. Yeah. Enjoy the Christmas holiday. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll play okay. some tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you sooner than later. How about that? Freedom.